just as soon as it does happen. Don't touch that dial. It's going to be some night. From all the people at KNBC News. It's 57. Prince sold more than 100 million records, won seven Grammys, a Golden Globe, and an Academy Award. He's been a, a constant in my life for 30 years, and I needed to, like, say goodbye to him. He put out great music, and he was a great performer. Truly a once-in-a-lifetime artist. I was home, it was the morning of his death, and I got the call from Matt Goldberg, our managing editor at the time. He woke me up with the news, so I was depressed, and then I was excited about the assignment, which was the reason of his call. Yeah, I was at home too, and just in disbelief. I couldn't, I, I couldn't believe that I was hearing what I was hearing. The breaking news about the death of an American music icon, Prince, the innovative one-of-a-kind artist who's given us so much great music over the decades, has been found dead at his Paisley Park compound in suburban Minneapolis. And I was asked if I wanted to go and, and do the story. I'm like, of, of course I do. I, I gotta go. You want that call. You, you hate the news, but you know someone's got to tell it. Why not me? So sure, I was honored to be included in the Prince coverage. The man meant a lot to a lot of people. And this is our chance to you know, put it out there. So you know, racing to LAX, God bless Ronnie Jeffrey with all the logistics. She got us there. Focusing on, you know, just getting there and learning what we could about the nature of his death, when and where. I printed some things from home. I do remember that. You know, going online just for some background on Prince, because, you know, I think I know the guy, but let me make sure I don't mess this up. And I also think I cried a little bit. I do. I remember weeping just a while for uh, it all sunk in. like. This is why we're on this plane. This is not a happy assignment. Whew. <laughs> it was heavy. I mean, remember, we got that call that morning right after he passed. Prince is one of the, the biggest music icons ever. News of the 57-year-old singer's death at his famous Paisley Park estate quickly spread shock and heartache throughout the world of music. The fact that he had passed was, um, it was a shock. And, you know, doing what we do, you know, you always want to be, um, Part of the big stories. Because this was an unwitnessed death of a middle-aged adult, the decision was made to process the scene. And that's, that was one of the biggest. When we first got there, of course, we hit the ground running, and uh, the first stop was First Avenue, which was his club there. I think that's where they shot Purple Rain. That's right. Think, yeah. The place was packed outside from the front door, out in the street, and needless to say, inside. Security was very kind to let media in, so they kind of took us around the crowd. They were shocked that we made the trip. Surprise, a crew all the way from Los Angeles. You know, I remember being inside, and they, they had a Purple Rain Marathon going on on the screens, and people were dancing and crying and dancing and just kind of grieving in their own way inside, you know, Prince's main venue. And, and I remember just standing there watching the people and still just kind of being in shock that, you know, this is going on. It was a pinch yourself kind of moment. Like, I am inside First Avenue. I've seen this place. Morris Day in the Time jammed here. We were both tripping on it. We were like, can you believe, can you believe? We're on the dance floor with the camera. Party like it was 1999. And the club stayed open until 7 a.m., by the way, because seven is Prince's favorite number. So we got as much video as we could for the next day's story. And then went to the hotel and collapsed. At this point, the cause remains unclear at Prince's Paisley Park complex outside Minneapolis. The next day, we were out at Paisley Park. And um, that was, that was kind of interesting. You, you can't think of purple without thinking of purple rain. Pretty much everywhere we went, somebody had a Prince story. I grew up with him, so I wanted to come out here and take a look people at the hotel. There's so many things in my life that I can always associate with his songs. People at the airport. I just can't believe he's gone. Folks in the streets. Just talking about what a great person he was, inspirational in Minnesota. It was a different type of morning for different people. People were openly weeping. <laughs> Some had the original t-shirts with sevens on them and purple rain and fence filled with purple balloons and flowers and artist renderings. I mean, you name it, it was there in memory of Prince, along with the people who were more than happy to share their stories. There was media there from, 
you know, all over the world, really. Australia, Japan, mm -hmm. you know, lots of microphones, the likes of which you only see on, you know, like a presidential news conference or something. And finally, with respect to Prince, uh, I love Prince because he put out great music and he was a great performer. It was a floodgate, uh, a fire hose of real powerful sentiments. It's really surreal. It's just kind of unbelievable. Just deep affection for the guy. What he represented to Minnesota is amazing. We're talking acres and acres of fence and fans and every shade of purple you can think of. There was a guy that was actually doing a portrait of Prince right there by the fence. There was one lady who got her seat in the same spot you know, she just sat there and, and looked at Paisley Park and at the people. She never really said much, and, and that's what she was all day long. The artwork, all the memorabilia, there was a guitar somebody left on the fence. Mylar balloons, posters, album covers, CD covers, newspaper accounts had been tacked to the fence line. It, it was just really kind of surreal. Everybody had stories, you know, where they had seen him in person and how he lived in that community for a reason. He knew they wouldn't swarm him. There was no TMZ in Minneapolis. And I don't really consider myself a superstar. I live in a small town and I always will. He lived like a private person. I'm just like anyone else. A lot of people said, oh yeah, they'd see him in so many places, you know, Target and Starbucks and like normal folk. He rolled like that. He just put everything back into the community. He used to just pop up at the Chanhassen Theater, and he would pop up at the McDonald's. He loved McDonald's. In his hometown, he, he was a homeboy. It endeared him to people, and a level like you know, fans in the mosh pit at the big arenas will never know. Prince was kind of more like the fabric of my life. Everybody wanted to tell their story, wanted to say something about what he meant to them. The fact that he, you know, he's from the Midwest is kind of cool, because. I'm also from the Midwest. He'd gone to school there. Some of my greatest memories and joys have been at Paisley Park. He jammed with people they knew. He made music that you didn't hear. He made music you could feel. They knew of Prince's influence and considered him you know, their shining star. Not just chart-topping, record-breaking guy, but our guy. Not to overstate the obvious, but some scenes we get to, we're not welcome. But boy howdy, did we feel nothing but love the entire time we were in Minneapolis. Good. Thank you. People were so grateful. We came to share their angle on his impressive life. There were no sharp elbows, no bad attitudes. Everybody was where they wanted to be. So when the family showed up, kind of out of the blue, I don't believe it was announced. We just noticed a lot of activity at one of the corners of the fence and they had parked whatever SUVs they'd arrived in in the distance. And you could just kind of see the mass of humanity head in that direction, cameras and civilians. And we became a part of that. And as I recall, all they said was they loved him. It was nothing but love, which is frankly what the man stood for. It's like time stood still. You know, as scenes go when you, you see the people who've lost someone and we cover a lot of tragedy. It felt like that. Their presence alone speaks volumes. And then they, the sister did most of the talking. And it just seemed like even if they hadn't told us that was Prince's family, we would have known that was Prince's family. Oh, yeah. He wasn't from LA, but he had performed, what, 30 nights at Staples? And his um, imprint in LA is not to be denied. I'm just so proud that I live in the city of Los Angeles and they're actually having the celebration right here like this. I remember finally coming back and seeing how LA did it up and did it right and being really proud. Just to be here is an honor to celebrate his life. And we were all like vibing on the fact that we are covering history. This isn't just a concert in the streets outside City Hall anymore. This is LA's version of what David and I had just experienced in Minneapolis. You know, we like to light up City Hall they lit it up for Prince, and that just seems so appropriate. I probably have a little bit of regret that I only saw him in concert once. I was at Paisley Park the summer before he died because the National Association of Black Journalists Convention, you've heard this already, we had our convention in Minneapolis. End of the night, and we thought we couldn't dance anymore. He did come out in gold lame pants, and he said, thanks for coming, good night. And we're like, oh, just saw Prince not realizing the following summer I would be back at Paisley Park to cover his passing. This one was very special to both of us, you know. His death was 
um, universal. I mean, not just Minneapolis or here. I mean, I, it was felt all around the world. Music icons don't come our way every day, again, like Michael Jackson. So I put him in that pantheon, and he meant a lot. He still does, to be honest. We finished with our processing late yesterday afternoon and turned Paisley, Paisley Park back over to Prince's representatives. Whatever cost him his life, and nobody was judging at that point, I don't think we even knew for another day or two what the cause was, you know, him passing of fentanyl. You know, all of that came out later. It's, it's still very heavy. So as stories go, I, I'm not gonna deny this one. This one lingers, something you have to shake off. But I, I embrace these memories not just being a fan, but also one of the reporters who was blessed to cover his passing. As temperatures drop and crowds here start to scatter, many are planning to make screenings of Purple Rain. We hope to do the same and have more for you in a later report. From Chanhassen, Minnesota, I'm Beverly White, NBC4 News. This one, it stands alone in stories I've been assigned in my career. It's, it, it felt intimate and rare and refreshing. And still, at the bottom line, it was also so terribly sad. Terribly sad. I think we probably have, arguably, the two best players in the NBA. You think of one of the best to ever do it in any sport for this generation or many others, the one word Kobe will come up for sure. He was more than a symbol, he was more than a citizen. He really was a part of the soul of the city.